Hey everybody, it's IB Crazy. Most of you know me for making antennas, but the other thing I make are airplanes. And in this video, I wanna show you just how I do that. How do I get an airplane like this from a formless block of foam like this? In this video, I'm gonna take you from the design all the way to the manufacturing of a model inspired by Burt Rutan's Long Easy. This is a general layout of the airplane. As you can see here, the wingspan from tip to tip is 38 inches. The length from top to bottom, back here where the winglet is, all the way to the nose, is 29 and 3 quarters of an inch, so just under 30 inches of length. I don't want to make the airplane too long or it won't rotate very well on the canard. If I make it too short, the canard will cause it to be unstable. We're gonna start off this build by designing the wing. I'm going to use a NACA 23015 airfoil because it combines good lift characteristics and moderate drag. This area here represents the area that my foam cutter will take up. So it's a good idea if I draw a base plate now to make sure that I don't end up making a file the machine can't cut. Also, you can see it's all the way up against this edge, so I'm going to give myself a barricade here because I can't go past it. The next thing I have to do is take off the back section here because I want this to be balsa and not foam for the elevons. So, I'm just going to trim off the back something like this. Okay, so now I've removed this back section here. And now I have my airfoil. Okay, so now I've got my tool path put in my airfoil. The hot wire is going to come in here, cut the wing out, and then cut them out this way. This is only about an inch and an eighth thick. And of course, my block is six inches thick, so it would be a waste if I didn't create multiple wings. However, here I want to make the opposite side wing. So I'm going to have to invert this. Now that I've made the wing root, it's time to make the wing tip. And I'm going to locate that out somewhere around here and give it a place to cut. So in order to, so in order to do that, I'm going to select both of these airfoils, move them out this way, by copying them, and I want about a 38 inch wingspan, so I'm going to go half that distance of 19 inches and move it away. Now I want to sweep this back to make it look similar to the long easy, so I'm going to go back, oh, let's call it 14 inches. The next thing I need to do is to scale these down because now the airfoils are both the same size and of course I'm going to want to reduce them a little bit. So I'm going to go down to, oh, 50%. Now the thing is, is these are both closer to the ground plane than these two airfoils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to move both of them up. However, my distance between these two is two and a half inches. Again, I have a six inch block. So to get the most out of the block, I'll select these two and copy this exact image right above. Okay, and there you have it. That is my wing. Well, mostly. The next thing I need to do is create my tooling path. I like to start from the top of the block, so I'm going to select this top airfoil first. Uh-oh, we have a problem. This is where my machine needs to move, and this is the edge of where it can go. So, it looks like I didn't back the airfoil out enough the first time. But before I go backing it up, this looks pretty far away too. In order to correct the problems we have with the machine, I believe the best way to do this is simply to rotate the block. You know, I don't want to go too far. For this, I'm just going to go about 10 degrees. The reason is, is it will begin to distort the airfoil if I go to tilt too much. Then I'm going to create my tooling path for the machine again and see how it looks. It looks like it fits pretty well this time. I've got a very, very small tooling path out here, 
but it seems that all the lines are there, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Then, I'll go ahead and create the tooling paths for the other three airfoils. I like to start from the top down, because as you begin to remove a little bit of foam with the wire cutter, everything will start to move down. So if I start at the top, it verifies the wing will be in the position that I want it to be. Now there is one last check. I need to be sure I'm not sending my cutter down through the bottom of the table here. And it appears that I don't. So with this, I can go ahead and proceed with cutting. With the wing profile uploaded into the machine, now I must cut the block to fit. I made some quick hand calculations to figure out the optimal size for the block to make sure the wing profile will get cut properly. I'm just going to make one quick check to make sure that I'm set right. All right, let's tell this thing to cut the block. Here I'm trimming the block to 18 inches. That's half of the wingspan when you account for the fuselage. Then what I do is I take the block and I have to trim the back off at an angle because I'm bringing the hot wire into the back of the block. So I have to cut this off so that the hot wire doesn't get bound up between different parts of the cut. Hot wire cutting is very, very slow, hence why this is sped up. This is about six times speed. Here I have my trimmed block set at a 10 degree angle just like I did in the software. As you can see, the hot wire cutter is running very fast through this profile. This is about 20 times speed right here, as you can tell by the light flickering in the background. Here we see the wingtip profiles. You'll notice they're much smaller, just like I had them in the software. The machine actually runs two separate programs, one for each axis. While the foam cutter's doing its cutting, I'm going to design the canard. We're going to go back to our NACA 23015 airfoil, but we're going to reduce it down to four inches because the canard is much smaller than the main wing. However, because we lose a good bit of foam when we make the cut, I'm going to have to make this a little bit thicker to make sure it stays a true airfoil. Another problem we run into is right here at the back of the wing. This will turn into an ugly looking melt. So in order to mitigate this problem, I'm going to cut it off just like that. That will end up melting to approximately a point, except it just won't look very poorly. Then to cut the notch, I'll simply move in this way about an inch and a half. Here you can see I created the notch, leaving myself about an eighth of an inch of foam to make a foam hinge. I also did the same operation as I did on the main wing by inverting one of the airfoils, then lifting it up, then transposing it down to the other side. Now what I'm doing here is taking these airfoils and stacking them three on top of each other because the canard is thin enough that I can make six at one time. And now the only thing that remains is to cut out our airfoils. However, yet again, we have a problem. Note on the far side, there's just this little dot that is our airfoil. My machine cannot figure out what that is, so I'm going to have to make some adjustments. The easiest way to mitigate the small cut problem is simply to move these down towards the middle of the table a little bit. I'm just gonna go six inches and see if that clears it up. And from the look of it, it appears six inches was just what I needed. The airfoil on the other side has a full contour so my machine can recognize it. Now the only thing that remains is to make sure I'm not poking beyond what the machine's limits are, and this appears to be fine too. However, after copying all three airfoil templates all the way over and checking the bottom of the machine, I see that my airfoil is actually protruding through the bottom, so these will need to be raised up a little bit. Here I've got my profile loaded, my foam block trimmed to size, and I'm cutting out the canard. As you can see, it's moved in from the edge of the machine just like I did in the 3D software. Again, this is sped up about 20 times. You can see the notch doesn't protrude all the way through the foam despite the melt. There's just enough there to make a good live hinge. So I think this is gonna work out very well. With the machine done cutting, I'll take out the canard section and check the hinge. They slide out fairly easily, so it looks like the cut was successful. Checking the flex, looks like we have a live hinge. 
Now we're looking to make the fuselage. We're coming right back to our airfoil again because this is a good starting point. Now I'm going to move it away from the front side about six inches to make room for the canard cutout. Now we're going to lose some foam when we cut the profile, so we're going to have to actually make this one a little bit smaller since this is going to be the cutout in our fuselage. I'm going to have to come down this way to about 90%. That's a good guess. And then I'll bring this in to about 97%. I want this to be a pretty tight fit, but again, these are guesses and I'll have to see the difference after I cut it out. The next thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to, have to make a copy of this just like I did the last time for the canard. Of course, I'm going to have to scale this now too. Okay, to make the outer body of the fuselage, I find it's easiest just to draw a rectangle and then just cut out the inside of it. I want my fuselage to be three inches tall by 20.75 long per the other drawing. As you can see, I'm not perfectly lined up here. I'm close, but not perfect. So what I'll do is I'll find the midpoint here, strike a line through it, and then move my airfoils up to that line. To make the rest of this fuselage, I'm gonna to have to cut out the inside here. I'm gonna start by making a couple of construction lines. Since a perfectly flat nose isn't necessarily good for crashing or cutting, I'm gonna make it a little bit of a blunted section. Now to dress up the rear section of the airplane. I intend to mount the motor back here, so I'm not gonna bring this to a point like I did in the front. I just need to add a curve to the bottom and to the top, but leave some flak section to mount my motor. Now the only thing that remains to be done is simply to trim off the outer edges of our rectangle and we have our fuselage. Well, at least part of it. I still gotta get in here to cut out this airfoil and this airfoil. This one I'll simply do from the back as that's very, very simple. Now on to the canard. It looks like the best way to come into this guy is from the front. So we're just gonna take a very, very, very small section out of fuselage. Now, of course, this is going to cause the nose to be slightly warped, but I think overall it should be okay. The next thing I have to do is I have to give the wire a place to come in. Right now, this is a solid form and that's not gonna work too well. So the way I'm gonna do this is quite simple. I'm just gonna draw a line from here down to the bottom taking note of its length and then make it just a little bit short of that. Then I'll move this back about five inches to get a hot wire path to come in and then I'll connect this again moving that back. Now we have a path for the hot wire to come in and cut this entire fuselage out. While a square fuselage would work, a contoured one would be much better. Here I've taken half of a NACA 0015 airfoil and now I'm just going to stretch it out the length of my fuselage. As you can see, my fuselage contour is laying down underneath it to make sure that this lines up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, split it in half, and then put an inch of blunt between it. Once I have half of the airfoil designed, it's simply a mirroring operation to get the other side because the fuselage will be fully symmetrical. The fuselage was just barely small enough that I could actually stack two on top of each other, so I figured why waste the foam and just stack them. You can see the hot wires falling through the tool path, and right here it makes the canard cut, then comes right back out the way it came and finishes the cut. Once done, I'll remove the fuselage, flip it on its side, and then cut the other contour. After pulling all the foam out of their respective blocks and gluing them together, this is what the airplane looks like. Admittedly, it actually looks better than I first anticipated. And I'm really excited to put electronics in this and get it flying, mainly because I just glide tested it outside and found out it's already hitting the CG and it's gliding really well. So I can't imagine how good this is gonna fly once I put electronics in it. However, that doesn't mean I'm done yet. There's still a lot of work to be done. I still have to design my winglets. I have to install my ailerons or elevons, depending on how I want to use them, and make some adjustments to the cut because everything isn't just quite the way I want it to be for a production model. But overall, I'm really happy with this. And during the build, it got its name. 
the Pegasus. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Feel free to try scratch building your own. It's very rewarding. I might be crazy and keep them flying.